Woropiri country The Woropiri, sometimes referred to as Yapa, are a group of Aboriginal Australians defined by their Woropiri language, although not all still speak it. There are 5,000 to 6,000 Woropiri, living mostly in a few towns and settlements scattered through their traditional land in the Northern Territory, north and west of Alice Springs. About 3,000 still speak the Woropiri language. The word Woropiri has also been romanized as Wolpiri, Walbiri, Elpira, Elpira, and Whalebury. The Woropiri language is a member of the Ngumpin Yapa subgroup of the Pama Nyungan family of languages. The name Yapa comes from the word for person, and is also used by the Woropiri people to refer to themselves, as indigenous people rather than Cardia. The closest relative to Woropiri is Woromanpa. It has four main dialects, Yendamu Woropiri in the southwest, Willowra Woropiri in the central area, around the Lander River, the northern dialect, Lajamanu Woropiri, and the eastern dialect Waikurti Woropiri, spoken on the Hanson River. Most Woropiri speakers are bilingual or multilingual, English being their second, or perhaps third, fourth or fifth language. The younger generation of Woropirus at Lajamanu have developed a new language, Light Woropiri, based on an amalgamation of words and syntax from Woropiri, English and Creole. Many also speak other languages, such as Arun, Yaru, Western Desert Language, Warumungu. Indigenous Sign Language is also an important component of Warupiri communication, as many of 600 distinct signs being used. Thus a sentence like Ga Na Jani Jadajara Guraju can be said with the same syntax, in gestures, touch chest slash move right index finger slash point north slash with lips slash click fingers towards north. Kenneth Hale, an American linguist, mastered Warupiri and was adopted by the tribe, who knew him as Javanunga. On returning to the United States, he raised his twin sons, Caleb and Ezra, in the Warupiri tongue, and Ezra delivered the eulogy at Hale's funeral in that language. Warupiri country is located in the Tanami Desert, east of the Northern Territory Western Australia border, west of the Stewart Highway and Tennant Creek, Northern Territory, and northwest of Alice Springs. Many Warupiri people live in Alice Springs, Tennant Creek, Catherine, and the smaller towns of Central Australia. Their largest communities are at Lajamanu, Nirupi, Yendamu, Aligarange and Wurliare slash Willowra. Woropiri traditional territory was resource poor to White Eyes, and lay a considerable distance away from the main telegraph routes and highway infrastructure built by Europeans, a fact which meant they were not affected by these intrusive developments. Allowing their culture to remain relatively intact and flourishing, unlike the Enmadier, the Katatai, Warumungu, Woromanpa, Mudbura and Jingili peoples. One consequence of this is that by the 1980s the Woropiri people had expanded their range, moving into the lands of the Anmadier as the latter's population dropped. On August 21, 1980 a land claim was submitted by 90 claimants on behalf of the Woropiri, Kukatya and Gardi peoples, as traditional owners. Under the Aboriginal Land Rights Act 1976, for an area of about 2,340 square kilometres. It was the 11th traditional land claim presented on behalf of Aboriginal traditional owners by the Central Land Council. The land borders on areas in which each of the languages, Ngardi, Woropiri, and Kukatya, is dominant. People from the different language groups have been influenced by each other when residing at Balgo, Western Australia, and Lajamanu, Northern Territory. The claim was presented at Balgo Mission. The recommendation handed down by Justice Sir William Carney on August 23, 1985 and presented on August 19, 1986 was that the whole of the claim area be granted to a land trust for the benefit of Aboriginals entitled by tradition to its use or occupation. Whether or not the traditional entitlement is qualified as to place, time, circumstance, purpose or permission. Mervyn McGitt was sent by his teacher A.P. Elkin to study the Woropiri, and he stayed with them for over 18 months from 1953 to 1958. His research into their social system, Desert People, a study of the Walbiri Aborigines of Australia, was published in 1962. In the mid-1970s, Diane Bell undertook detailed work of the lives of Woropiri women, summed up in her Daughters of the Dreaming. Liam Campbell, in his Darby, 100 Years of Life in a Changing Culture, recorded the autobiography of one Woropiri man. Darby Jam Pigeon for Ross, a centenarian who lived through the profound changes affecting his people throughout the 20th century, including the death of family in the Coniston Massacre. In 2000, 
The French anthropologist Françoise Dussart published a major study of the interplay of gender roles in the ritual maintenance and transmission by Yom Peru. Holders of both sexes of the big secrets, regarding the tales and ceremonies concerning the Warapiri dreaming. Warapiri are known for their traditional dances and have given performances at major events. Singing and dancing are also used in Warper culture for turning boys into men, curing sicknesses, childbirth, attacking enemies, and ensuring fertility. The Warapiri also have many different religious ceremonies and events where they sing and dance. Many indigenous artists, particularly in the Papunya Tula organization, are of Warapiri descent. Mornayaka Art, in Lajamanu, Northern Territory, is owned by the artists, who create works across a range of traditional and contemporary art mediums. A small gallery displays the art, and some of the artists have been finalists in the National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Art Award. In the past, Warapiri artwork was created on wood and sand. Then later, the artwork was made on the body of Warapiri people. Today the art is used in galleries to pass down tradition and laws to the next generation of the Warapiri people. Warapiris divide their relatives, and by extension the entire population, into eight named groups or subsections. These subsections are related to kinship, and determine one's family rights and obligations. The following is a brief sketch of how the subsection system relates to genealogy. The subsections are divided into four semi-patrimoides, each consisting of two subsections. One always belongs to the same semi-patrimoidy as one's father, but to the opposite subsection, so that men in a patriliny will alternate between those two subsections. The subsections are also divided into two matrimoides, each consisting of four subsections. One always belongs to the same matrimoidy as one's mother, and women in a matriliny will cycle through the four subsections of that matrimoidy. The two subsections in a semi-patrimoidy always belong to opposite matrimoides, and similarly, the four subsections of each matrimoidy are distributed among the four semi-patrimoides. Each subsection is uniquely determined by which semi-patrimoidy and which matrimoidy it belongs to. Female lines of descent in the two matrimoides cycle through the semi-patrimoides in opposite directions. The result is that one's mother's father's mother's father is of the same subsection as oneself. Siblings always belong to the same subsection. It follows from these rules that one must choose one's spouse from a particular subsection, and traditional Warapiri disapprove of marriages that break this constraint. The correct subsection to marry from is that of one's maternal grandfather. The subsection system underlies all of traditional Warapiri society, determining how Warapiris address and regard each other. Two members of the same subsection refer to each other as siblings, whether or not they actually have the same parent. Men in the same subsection as one's father are called father, and this practice is often followed even when Warapiris speak English. In the same way, most of the kinship terms in the Warapiri language actually refer to subsection relationships, not to literal genetic relationships. Traditionally, the first thing one Warapiri wants to know about another is their subsection. Warapiris often address each other by subsection name rather than by personal name and incorporate their subsection name into their English one, usually as a middle name. When Warapiris marry Europeans, they tend to extend the subsection system to their in-laws, starting with the assumption that the European spouse is of the correct subsection. Rather distant European relatives may find themselves classified as honorary uncles, nieces, grandparents, and so on. Warapiris will then try to make sure that further marriages with related Europeans will adhere to the marriage constraint. The traditional taboo against familiarity between a man and his mother-in-law extends automatically to any man and woman whose subsections are those of man and mother-in-law. The subsection system automatically prevents incest between siblings and any relatives closer than cousins. Cousins that are children of classificatory siblings of the same sex are themselves classificatory. Siblings, and may not marry, but children of classificatory siblings of the opposite sex are of the appropriate subsections for marriage. And marriage between so-called cross-cousins is actually encouraged in traditional society. Where a couple are not merely classificatory cross-cousins but are true cross-cousins, marriage is generally frowned upon. The eight subsections are interrelated in a pattern known in group theory as the Order 8 Dihedral Group, D4. If a Warapiri has a second-choice marriage, then any children they have take on two skin names, first, the skin name they would have adopted had the marriage been first choice, second, the skin name the second choice marriage implied. When asked what their skin name is, they often reply with the former, but may also additionally use the latter. 
In Wopiri culture, widows are not forced to remarry and are a very important part of society. The Wopiri people have had a hard time finding employment much like other indigenous people in Australia. The Australian government created training programs in the early 2000s, originally to help the economy and prevent welfare-dependent indigenous people. However, this had the effect of separating them from their culture. The Wopiri are known for their self-reliance and their close-knit society. They have their own radio show that not only connects the widely dispersed people, but connects them to the outside world, and allows the youth and women to have a voice. The Wopiri also now work with the US-based Newmont Mining Corporation. Newmont and the Wopiri made a plan known as the Granite's Kura 10-year plan. Because the Wopiri people are allowing the Newmont Corporation to mine on their lands, this gives them more job opportunities. This plan also helps support Wopiri education and in strengthening governance structures. Source, Tyndale 1974, p. 237. Thanks for watching.